What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp. It is October 29th, 2020. I don't do these live news streams much. That may change in the future. Who knows? But we just got done with the WWE third quarter call. And honestly, it was one of the more newsworthy ones in recent memory. They announced uh, the intent to run an event in India that, or for India that will highlight a lot of the developing Indian talent. Uh, they uh, announced, they being WWE, pronouns pal, uh, announced that they have uh, an intent to perhaps license the WWE Network, not sell it, but license the WWE Network, uh, both domestically and abroad. They also announced that they have several WWE Superstar documentaries in the works for A&E. Now, this goes in addition to the Treasure Trove, Hidden Treasure Trove show with uh, Stephanie McMahon and Triple H that will air on that channel eventually. And of course, they touted Total Divas or Total Bellas. But the big one, a Vince McMahon docuseries to air on Netflix. I did not see this coming. I did not expect this whatsoever. Reminder, if you're watching this video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, tap the bell for notifications. If you're watching live, donate a super chat we will read your question or statement on the air. But we have post-Raw shows, post-SmackDown, and I'm returning to the AEW NXT post-show on Wednesday, November 4th. It'll kick off at 10.30. And if you want more exclusive news, FightfulSelect.com. I'm breaking news over there every single day. That's the most direct way to support us, including how Vince McMahon had a part in Matt Riddle dropping his first name. There's a lot to that, but let's get to the point. A Vince McMahon docuseries. I didn't think that we would ever see this. He's a very guarded guy, he being Vince McMahon. Here's the story, as it appears on uh, Fightful.com. But Jeremy Lambert wrote, WWE is bringing a major docuseries to Netflix on the third quarter 2020 WWE financials call. WWE President and Chief Revenue Officer Nick Khan announced a multi-part Vince McMahon docuseries will be heading to Netflix. Bill Simmons will serve as the executive producer for the series, while Chris Smith, the director behind Fire, the greatest party that never happened, will be the director of the series. The docuseries is said to be one of the highest budgeted Netflix docuseries of all time, and no further details were announced. But Khan did also tout the success of Total Bellas, and the upcoming quest for the WWE treasures uh, on A&E, as well as documentaries. Of course, we have that full call available on YouTube.com slash Fightful. But to me, this is a shocker. But it's less of a shocker now than it would have been six months ago. And I say that because... Uh, Actually, even though a super chat wasn't sent, Jack Jameson in our live chat says, someone told Vince about the success of the Michael Jordan documentary. Precisely. I'm not saying that's the motivation for it. I'm not going to throw that out there and say, okay, that's what motivated it. That's, that's what happened. But that documentary, that last dance documentary, transcended sports. It transcended entertainment into general interest. You were getting over 10 million viewers for for each episode of that my mom doesn't care about sports she doesn't care about the bulls or michael jordan she watched that documentary and raved about it it just it transcended everything and i fully believe that an honest vince mcmahon docuseries could do the same he is one of the most fascinating people for better or for worse in in just period in Sports, entertainment, show business, whatever that may be. If it is honest, then I think it'll be exceptional. And even if it's not completely honest, as we've seen with a lot of WWE productions, it can still be pretty interesting. Bill Simmons is an executive producer. I don't know the true depth of his involvement in this. Obviously, he's a big wrestling fan, but if it's there by name only, well, then it doesn't really prove much, but... You do have Chris Smith, who directed the one of the Fire Festival documentaries on Netflix, the one that really, really caught fire, no pun intended. Uh, that, that is a good move. I like that. That one did very, very well, and this seems like an, an appropriate 
follow up. We do have some super chats. The Nerd Guru says nobody asked about Raw Creative. Uh, I don't. I mean, they they did tout that they would have better writing on the show, uh, but I, I don't know. I I'm not sure like exactly uh, what they really plan to do besides that. But yeah, it was the the ratings and viewership. And when you talk ratings, that is basically a way to kind of take a shot at creative, if you know what I mean. But the creative was not as much of a focus this time as it was last time. Anakin JMT says, Did WWE crack down on streaming today? Styles and Mia both announced they were suspending streaming for a while. I have not heard that. You know I will ask. I will see what I can find out. Uh, I do have some news on Mia Yim on FightfulSelect.com and that situation for Monday. Uh, bless that woman for, for standing up, though. Jeanette Latore, uh, Jeanette, I hope I am saying that name right, says, what a call, huh? Yeah, the the roller coaster of a WWE quarterly call is, okay, very rarely hits the peaks and valleys like this one did. The last two have been the most interesting I've covered in a long time. I've been covering these and on these since, I think, 2015 is when I did the first one for Wrestling Inc., and that's about... For a year, for every five, six, or for five or six years. So I've been on 20 to 25 of these and maybe 30, including some other uh, peripheral stuff. But last time had Vince McMahon getting hammered for creative and viewership. This time had him getting hammered for ratings a little bit more, but also had a ton of announcements off the top. They really figured it out this time how to, to control the news cycle a little bit better. Because right off the top, you had new A&E documentaries announced, you had Vince McMahon docuseries announced, and you had an uh, event targeted towards India announced. And let me tell you guys, from somebody who runs a wrestling website, you put out something that's major newsworthy, the Vince McMahon thing, and then you put out something especially that helps guide the Indian traffic, which is vast. Let me tell you, there is a huge wrestling fan base in India. So uh, when, when you get their attention on that as well, uh, n- maybe not as important as uh, the viewership stuff, rather. Because, uh, I mean, quite frankly, why would people that are wrestling fans in India care about American viewership? It probably doesn't. But they did a really, really good uh, good job of sort of not to steal one from EC3, controlling their own narrative, so to speak. They also said that a lot of the furloughed uh, names would be brought back, and I saw somebody say, oh, that's probably why Ryder didn't sign anywhere. No, that's he wasn't furloughed. That wasn't what that was. Nerd Guru says, I mean, is the docuseries going to be ran by Vince? Like, no way they reveal any deep, dark stuff. I can't imagine that Netflix would agree to one that Vince is, like, all for. Uh, WD, I think that Netflix does not need this nearly as much as... WWE does. I don't think either one of them need it, but I think that uh, Netflix and WWE are providing each other with an an opportunity here, and they're, they're really going to do well with it. Uh, I, I don't think this will be sanitized too much. I could be wrong, but I don't think it will be that sanitized. Reminder, guys, leave a thumbs up on this video and subscribe. Tell me what you think of the Vincent Mann docuseries. Do you think it will be sanitized? Do you think that that uh, Chris Smith's artistic integrity will be preserved here? Do you think that, that Netflix will uh, have, have their way with things here? Subscribe, leave a thumbs up. Net, uh, Denise pops in and says, Netflix, for the most part, does a great job on documentaries, so I think it'll be good in my opinion. That's the way I'm leaning to. Netflix is one of the biggest platforms in the world if somebody tries to tell them how to run their own stuff, I can't imagine from the outside looking in. I do not have a hand in that business. I don't think that they would be that keen on it. Until next time, guys, we're out.